prosecution has withdrawn the 46 corruption and money laundering charges against former Sabah Chief Minister Tan Sri Musa Aman with the judge in the case granting acquittals on all charges. Of the 46, 30 were for corruption while the remaining 16 were for money laundering. Deputy Public Prosecutor Dato Azhar Abdul Hamid said the decision had been made following instructions from the Attorney General's chambers. Musa Aman's lawyers highlighted that he had already been cleared of the allegations in 2012 by the MACC and the Independent Commission Against Corruption of Hong Kong. Musa was alleged to have received 50.1 million US dollars from eight logging concessionaires as an inducement to approve logging concessions for 16 companies. This was during his tenure as CM and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Sabah Foundation. As for the money laundering charges, it was claimed that Musa had directed his proxy, Richard Christopher Barnes, to set up an account at UBS AG Bank in Barnes' name for the purpose of receiving proceeds of illegal activities through the account. The government has appointed Dr. Fadlullah Suhaimi Abdul Male as new chairman of the Malaysian Communication and Multimedia Commission, effective tomorrow. Fadlullah replaces Al Ishal Isha, who has held the position since October 2018. Communication and Multimedia Minister Datuk Saifuddin Abdullah says Fadlullah's appointment was made concurrently with the ministry's plans for policy improvements under the MCMC. The policy improvements will involve three major aspects, namely infrastructure, 5G readiness, as well as governance and transparency. Saifuddin also announced the appointment of former Telecom Malaysia CEO and MD Tansri Zamzam Zairani Muhammad Isa as Fat Lula's telecommunications advisor. Shares in AirAsia Group and sister AirAsia X were among Bursa Malaysia's top five most actively traded today on the news that domestic tourism would be allowed under the Recovery Movement Control Order. AirAsia stock rose as much as 19.08% or 16.5 cent to 103 in noonday trading before closing 21.4% up at a three-month high of 105 with over 318 million shares traded. AAX shares ended the day 19% higher at 12.5 cent with over 329 million shares changing hands. Positive movement was also seen at Malaysia Airport's holdings, which was one of the bourse's top gainers. During the course of the day, MHB stock added as much as 63 cent before shedding some gains to close 10.9% or 60 cent up at 610. MHB, which recently lost its spot on the benchmark FBM KLCI, came out to assure consumers that its airports are safe and ready for operations under the RMCO. High Court has dismissed two government applications to forfeit money linked to 1MDB from Jekyll Trading and Barisan National Johor Bahru. Jekyll was alleged to have received 628,314 ringgit, while BN Johor Bahru purportedly received almost 960,000 ringgit. Judicial Commissioner Dato Ahmad Shareh Mohamad Saleh said that the prosecution had failed to prove Section 56 of the Anti-Money Laundering, Anti-Terrorism Financing and Proceeds of Unlawful Activities Act 2001 or AMLA in order to be able to seize the funds. Meanwhile, Deputy Public Prosecutor Sameha Razali and Mahadi Abdul Jumaat told the court that they will submit a formal application for a stay of execution pending appeal within 14 days from today. To recap, in June last year, the MACC filed a civil forfeiture suit against 41 entities comprising individuals, companies and political parties under AMLA to recover about 270 million ringgit believed to be linked to 1MDB. The MACC believed the money was illegally transferred from XPM Datuk Sri Najib Razak's accounts. Troubled glove maker WRP Asia Pacific confirmed that its premises were raided by the MACC as part of an investigation into the alleged misappropriation of funds by former CEO Datuk Lee Son Hong. This comes after WRP's legal action against Lee after it claimed that he had mismanaged the company and refused to account to the board regarding the WRP state. It also accused Lee of conspiring to wind up the company. Lee has disputed the claims made against him. In a statement, WRP says that while the raid is not what it wanted, it represents another step forward in holding its previous management accountable. As part of its turnaround efforts, WRP had on March 5th appointed former IGP Tansri Musa Hassan as an advisor on compliance. 
WRP said that its board had uncovered substantial legacy issues which would require intensive investigation and remedial measures. Thank you.